why is Toncoin up only? Well, the rest of the market is either moving in a sideways range or even is seeing bigger corrections. In this video, we will uncover this mystery by looking at on-chain data and of course, technical analysis using the Philprints toolset. And for everyone who doesn't know what Toncoin is, I will cover that as well. So without any further ado, let's go. The most recent news about Toncoin is that it's actually now in the top 10 cryptocurrencies, currently ranking number 9 and that is actually just a few days ago, more specifically on April 9th. So it actually has a higher market cap than Cardano and Avalanche. Ton stands for the open network, but that hasn't been the case since the beginning. There it was called Telegram Open Network. And when I say Telegram, yes, I mean the Telegram messaging app that we all know and love, especially in crypto. Everyone in the crypto space is basically in Twitter, Telegram and Discord. Of course, the Philprints community is no exception. Join my Telegram group now, link is down below. So how come that Ton is not standing for Telegram Open Network? work anymore. That's because in 2020 there has been a court fight with the SEC and basically in short they didn't like that Telegram is building a blockchain. So initially just weeks before its launch the SEC halted the project. And in the end, to resolve these issues, the Telegram CEO Pavel Durov announced that Telegram would no longer be developing Ton. So there is basically an independent foundation that develops Ton, but they still work with Telegram. And these ties with Telegram really show in the usage of Ton. You basically have a wallet directly integrated into Telegram. There are even commission-free crypto transfers to any Telegram users. And you have access to a whole ecosystem of dApps running on Ton. And this big ecosystem is, in my opinion, what really drives Ton at the moment from a fundamental perspective. There's stuff like Ton Mobile and an anonymous eSIM, a DNS service, an audience monetization service for Telegram communities, digital art, NFTs, and so much more. All in all, the ecosystem consists of 637 apps at the moment that are fully usable for Telegram users in app. Also, not too long ago, Ton started the so-called Jetons, which are nothing else than tokens on the Ton Layer 1 blockchain. You can find everything from meme coins to wrapped tokens, for example, USDT, which is then called JUSDT. If we have a look at the price chart, we can see that Ton coins started out in August 2021, but the most parabolic surge started out on February 25th this year. And since then, it's been more than a 3x with no signs of stopping. If we have a look at the total value locked for Ton, we can see that starting from February 28th, where the TVL was sitting at around 18 to 19 million dollars, has seen more than an 8x since then. So that it now sits at around 160 million dollars. This is definitely some impressive growth. Let's now have a look at some on-chain data by using one of the tools from my Flipprints tool set, which is the token demand analyzer. Let's see where demand is coming from. And what we can directly spot is that we have a record number of new wallets being created for Toncoin. And this shows us that there's a lot of new holders for Toncoin and it's not just people reaccumulating Toncoin and therefore making price surge. You can actually beautifully see how these spikes were reflected in price. This first surge here was at around February 28th. This was this first pump and the second spike on March 13th, this was at around this pump, then this double spike on March 24th, which was accompanied by this pump, and then the very recent and very enormous spike here for new wallets was accompanied by this pump. Also looking at the transaction activity, these enormous spikes, which are very different from all the noise we have most of the time, these often signal enormous stuff going on. For example, this enormous spike, which was exactly before the recent pump. And then again, this big spike on April 11th. Let's see if this will cause another big spike. And same you can see here on March 23rd. This was in the middle of this rally and caused this spike here. The next thing we're going to look at is the number of whale wallets and the number of plankton wallets and its change over time. As you can see directly, there is a big divergence in wallets that have a minimum of 100 tokens, meaning around $700 at current prices and wallets that have more than 10,000 tokens, meaning a minimum of around 70,000 US dollars. As you can see here, for example, in end of November, 2023, we had around 2,300 wallets 
with this balance and just 129 wallets with this bigger balance. And if we now compare this to the recent top and this point, which is similar to this, to this recent local top, there we can see that the number of big whale wallets is decreasing and the number of small retail or plankton wallets is increasing rapidly. For one, this shows us that growth is coming from retail. Now, from a whale perspective, this could mean they don't have too much interest in Toncoin in general, or they suggest that this extremely vertical rally for Toncoin is coming to an end, and therefore they are not accumulating as heavily as before. Also, if you have a look at how gradual this chart here for the plankton wallets is compared to the whale wallets, this really shows how the retail is buying coins and then just holds to it, and the whales are reshuffling every Every time because whales or smart money in general really doesn't care what the coin is they just want to make money they want to sell higher than they bought they don't want to catch bottoms they don't want to catch tops therefore they are constantly re-evaluating their investments and that's what these small spikes all over are showing this becomes even more clear if we have a look at the hourly view of plankton wallets and whale wallets over the last 30 days and not since token inception as we saw in these above charts here you can see that there was an even more vertical accumulation since april 8th and march 25th whereas the whale wallets are accumulating more heavily since end of march but are selling off since april 9th also if we have a look at the more broad picture of what the top 100 wallets are doing you can see what the overall trend is on the daily basis most are just huddling there's some buying this is what you can also see here just starting from this small bottom this is the daily buying we can see here and then as well on a weekly basis of course mostly huddling some selling but then some good buying on a monthly and quarterly basis there's even more dynamics so it's not as much huddling as buying and selling nevertheless most of the wallets are in a profit even in a very big profit 2x to 5x is 41 percent of these big wallets and even around 15 percent of these wallets are sitting at around a 5 to 10x so far so good next thing that could be interesting is to look at the biggest holders the top holder ranking number five is a top 10% DEX trader. And this is potentially a nice wallet to have a look at for other gems. He's not only having $2.249 million in Toncoin, so this could be a good starting point for finding tokens that could perform well. Suggesting that these big wallets, these top 10% trader, as it says here, are quite good in picking coins and have a bit more knowledge than the rest of the market. So far, so good. Now we've analyzed the token demand perspective. So let's have a look at what technical analysis is telling us. For this, I will use three of my indicators, the Philprints reversal bands, the Philprints multi-time frame moving averages and the Philprints trend finder. The most obvious thing we can see is we are in a strong uptrend and the blue moving average is giving us so many touch points as support it hasn't been sufficiently broken since the start of this rally on february 28th apart from this small wick here to the golden ema at the moment we are pretty far away from the blue ema which suggests that we could be a little over but within this super strong uptrend we have even more enormous sub uptrends which you can see right here these super vertical pumps basically every time we move into this golden upper band these two bands actually we're seeing a super explosive move and if we leave these bands this suggests the start of weakness more specifically it shows us when the trend ends and when to take profits let me show how to do this the first candle after such an enormous move that closes below the golden band is to be marked as a support and resistance level. You could use the candle low and the candle close. To be more safe, we will use the low. And as you can see here, within the next candle close, we closed below it. And this then suggests that to a high likelihood, the trend is ending. We even retested it as resistance and then broke down further to the blue moving average. Also, these resistance and support levels after such an enormous trend tend to be important resistance and support later on as well as you can see here now it's not always that we leave the golden band and we have to go down immediately for example as you can see here this red candle closed below the golden band for the first time since this move started so this is our new 
level and we immediately bounced up from it, went below it again, retested it as support and then went up again. Then we're doing the same stuff again. We were in the golden band. This was the first candle to close below it. We can use the candle close or the low, depends on your risk appetite. We went up, then consolidated and this here was our exit signal. This candle closed below. And from there, we moved down, as you can see, actually to the last support level that was initiated by this outwards close of the golden band. Also in sideways ranges, the golden band acts as a top signal for the small ranging moves. And then here again for this recent strong vertical move, we're seeing something similar unfolding right now. This first outside candle close didn't break down, but now this one definitely did. We had multiple candle closes below it, and this suggests that we will see another leg down first. So if you're trading, this is perfectly to take profits. If you're investing, this is perfect to see were to not DCA in anymore and were to probably DCA again. Apart from this, you can see here we have some divergences forming here on the trend finder. So this here suggests we have a bearish divergence, same as we had it here, which also marked this local top. Also, when we have a look at this fine line here, this is the fast trend, whereas the solid line is the slow trend. And if the fast trend is is moving to the top of this line here. This suggests that a bigger parabola is coming. So not immediately, but midterm, as you can see here, same here and here. This is especially interesting if it was down at zero and then move completely to the upside. This shows us that midterm, not short term, we can have a bigger parabola forming. If the slow trend and fast trend are basically congruent, this suggests that the parabola might be oversold or starts to have signs of exhaustion. If you want to learn more, join my Telegram community right now. Link is down below. Soon, all of my Telegram members will get access to one of these indicators for free alongside a mini course where you will learn to properly use the indicator to its fullest degree. Also, if you haven't subscribed to this channel yet, please ask yourself why and do it now. You really don't want to miss any of the next videos. Of course, this was not financial advice. Always do your own research and due diligence. This was Phil Prince for you. Until next time, crush the markets. Goodbye.